What's up, Lowrider family? Welcome back to another episode with Lolos and More. Now, today, um, we're going to install the rear upper trailing arms. I know I said last time was the last time we see the Monte Carlo, but I figured I'd show you that real here real quick because there's a small thing that you are going to run into. So, I took the first trailing arm out. I'm about to line up the holes so I can swap in one. Uh, when you're doing the trailing arms, do one at a time. Because if you, if you take them, if you do them by sets, if you take off both uppers, it's going to be a pain to put it, put them back in. So do once, one at a time. And um, when you're taking off the uppers, take it off on the axle first and then from the frame. So, and just so you guys know, I know on some cars, they cut up. They cut off this piece from from here to here but on this car this fuel line is in the way and it um and it's a really big fuel line for some reason i don't know why chevy made it this way but it comes in here it loops comes back in that way i don't know why they made it that way, that way. but if i was to cut this piece off right here for to leave more room um because this also helps with a higher a bit of a higher lockup a little bit um if i was to cut it off and move the fuel line the fuel line will eventually get smashed by the trailing arm no matter how much i move this fuel line and like i said before if you guys move brake lines or fuel lines too much even on old cars they will break no matter how careful you are on old cars fuel lines or brake lines will move if you move them too much um so that's that so and then i'm also going to cut the springs i got one cylinder out doing one one at a time and then another thing that i'm doing that i don't think i'm gonna um put in this video is uh we're swapping out the front block because that front block had a low-end gear in it and those low-end gears in it did not have an o-ring or a spot for the o-ring to sit in the block okay for example so the homie bought the new the new block and backing plate he engraved the backing plate himself Right there, he did that himself. The owner of the MC did it. So what I'm talking about, about the O-ring spot. Okay, so right here. This circle right here has a small spot for an O-ring to sit. Okay. And, other, and others, um, and that block doesn't. It's completely flat. It's just like a hole. But that ha that has a spot for an O-ring to sit. So, because it doesn't have a spot to, for the O-ring to sit, um, it keeps breaking it. Without the without the O-ring, um, there's no pressure because when you hit the up switch, the gear just pushes the oil back into the tank because there's no um, seal. So. So yeah, I put an O-ring in there and then I double up an O-ring and when you double up an O-ring, it lasted longer with one O-ring and lasted maybe two times on the switch, raising it up two times. Doubling it lasted, I think, maybe six times. So yeah, I knew it was going to be an issue, so that's why the homie got a new block. So let me... Uh, match up the trailing arm with the existing holes and we'll be right back and i'll show you how it looks inside the car oh wait one thing i did forget to show you is when you're taking off the trailing arm there's a small issue not much of an issue but when you're taking off the top bolt um there's what's it called there's a uh, another fuel line in the way Believe it or not, see this fuel line right here? 
that's in the way of getting access to the to the nut that's connected to the bolt okay so you see this small gap right here from the uh, from the fuel line to the frame right here well you're supposed to stick an end wrench in there a wrench like this but make sure you put that in in it once you get it in there it's not gonna want to grab hold of it so you're gonna want to kind of pry this fuel line away just a little bit not too much because you don't want to break it so just pry it away a little bit and then the bolt this bolt up here slides right out so I want to show you guys that real quick so let me get this first trailing arm on and we'll be right back and I'll show you how it looks on so I got the new trailing arm in right there so pretty easy same way putting it in putting it out um, with installing these round adjustable control arms um, since you don't have to deal with a big flap like this like a big flap like that you get roughly I want to say about an inch clearance so it's like you'll have about a, an inch more to raise up the rear inch and a half or whatever so let me work on the other side I already did cut up both springs the homie with the car uh, I let him know what I was doing with the springs and he said you know what I don't care if they smash the speakers I want it to sit low so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, <clears throat> make sure it sits low for him so let me do the other side let me see how much more I gotta cut these springs I got them both cut the same right now but we'll see how much lower how much lower they are now all right be right back I'm trying to get this stuff done because I gotta take my wife to work today all right I got both trailing arms on I cut both the springs so now it sits sits around here now <clears throat> um, I don't know I think I might drop it a little bit more or I think that's how I'm gonna keep it um, there's still some clearance what I was paying attention to the car um, there's some indents already on that backing right there that tells me that that's where the cylinders used to sit the the other ones would hit <clears throat> so I think this is where this is how low the car used to sit so so yeah so let me raise it up and then I'll show you guys how it looks with both trailing arms on but I mean I guess this is how low I might be able to get it without really ruining anything because the homeboy really wants to go low and I told him if you hit a bump, you know, he can't blame me for it. He's like, he's like, I just want it to hit low. All right, <clears throat> so let's let's raise it up. Just close this a little. Let's go up on the back. I think I'm right, right there. Yep, <clears throat> that's it. So, I can't really see them too much. Let's go to the side. Got both of them on there. Looking pretty good. So, all I got left is pretty much putting the new block on that pump so um, like I said wasn't sure if I'm gonna put it on this video or not just want to make something quick for you guys so so yeah this Monte Carlo is gonna be picked up in a couple days after I post this video once I put the new pump on with the block I'm gonna finish tucking the wires like it did doesn't look too bad you know so I still need to tuck these wires. But overall, what do you guys think? So 
Well, all right. <clears throat> I'll hit you guys back up uh, when I got the new block on that pump. So we'll be back after that. All right. So real quick, guys. <clears throat> I thought I'd go ahead and just show you guys real quick um, what I'm gonna do real quick to the to my truck. Um, I'm actually gonna install some LEDs. Um, in the past, I always wanted to install some, uh, man, what are they called? The, uh, HIDs. They have, like, a ballast, and then you hook it up to your battery, and then you ground it. You hook it up to the light bulb that, that comes with the kit, with the HID kit. But, uh, that was, like, a few years back before LEDs were really popular. Now. So, now they're popular. And I found a good set from this guy out in Gresham. Believe it or not, I got this for 55 bucks. Um, <clears throat> and they fit my truck. And this guy has a whole bunch in stock for different cars, which is crazy. Because I asked him for my car, for my wife's car, and then for my lowrider right here. And he had them all. But I figured I will just get... One for my daily since I don't drive my truck. And then I'll get my wife some. But when I showed up, I guess there was three different types for the Volkswagen that I drive. So I'm like, ah, uh, I don't want to get the wrong one. And then I don't want to go back either. So I figured I'll just get some for the lowrider. Uh, I still need to wash it. So don't, do don't judge me. And it's cold as hell outside. And it's supposed to be snowing. So I'm not even going to wash it yet. So uh, let me go ahead. Put these in real quick, cause uh, the good thing about these LED ones these days is uh, they're made to fit the housing perfectly, and they and they plug in straight onto the factory harness of the back of the bulb, just like that. So just quick, like if you're changing the light bulb, the headlight in your in your ride or whatever. And since it's LED, it's very bright, and they don't have to, and you don't have to wait for these to warm up like you would with HIDs. So. And then these have like a little fan right here. This this right here is a fan. It helps it keep cool down. And it has this piece of aluminum. It helps keep the bulb down, cooled down. That way it doesn't warm up and heat up too much. So uh, let me go ahead, pop my hood. I'll show you guys here real quick of how it looks with the stock bulbs that my truck has now. And then uh, I'll do a after. All right, be right back. It's just real quick plug and play pretty much and here's the uh, before okay I got my old halogen bulbs out they have like a blue tint on them so my halides were a little a little blue so I got them in real quick right here just real easy hooks up to the factory harness or the back of the bulb where you would hook it up so my LS are, are look different yours would be different as well so got mine hooked up works just fine and it did it under what three minutes two minutes so let me uh, shut the hood and then I'll show you guys the after but oh, before Wait, so you saw the before, and then you, you're about to see the after. Okay, here's the after. Those are bright. I like that. So, hell yeah, finally get some bright headlights. Never had some bright headlights before. So, yeah, I figured I'd just show you guys that real quick. I'll leave um, a link of those down in the description down below if you guys want to buy any. They're, they're cheap, and um, they're LEDs and they're bright. It makes the ride pop a little bit when you're cruising down in the, cruising the streets in the night. So, all right, so let's get back to the video. All right, guys, today we're going to go ahead, swap out the block 
off of the uh, from the front pump because the thing doesn't like the block so so we're gonna go ahead and go do that I already got it disconnected wires off all I gotta do is take it off the, the rack so but real quick the homie with the car with the SMC he's throwing a car show in the next couple of months it's for a good cause it's for a little girl um, that uh, is fighting cancer so check out the picture right here I'll put the link of the event from the Facebook page I'll put that down in the link down below in the description hopefully you guys can be there I'll be there for sure with or without my truck I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it with the truck but I will be there if you guys want to hit me up I'll be there for sure so um, let's get started all right so let me get the pump out and uh, get start taking up I'm gonna start I'm gonna take off the motor and tank first and then I'm going to take off the dump assembly last on the pump that's in the car right now so let me do that okay I got the motor and I got the tank off what I'm gonna do next is take off the gear and after that I'm gonna take off the return hoses right here on both ends I don't have to take them off completely I'll probably just undo them from here and here and leave them connected to the T right here to the return line um, I'll, I'll leave it alone I'll, I'll leave them together and then what I'll do after that I'll put it on my vise with a, a piece of cloth so I don't ruin this block anymore pretty much this block is useless it's old school can't put any new gears like these without o-rings busting all the time so I'm um, gonna remove the return stem first I'll just leave the lines hooked up and then I'll undo the whole dump assembly together that way all I got to do is put some new um, Teflon tape uh, on these two ends right here and that's it and I'll put it on a new block and it's pretty easy and then I'll be done here in the next few minutes so um, let me get this done quick so I can uh, clean up some wires because this MC is getting picked up tomorrow so um, yeah I'll, let me take all this off real quick okay that took a couple of minutes so as you guys can see this is what it meant take out the whole dump assembly off together the whole return stem together I decided just to go ahead and take the damn hoses off they were getting in the way pissing me off but this is what I was talking about so this is where the gear, the gear sits right here um, as you guys can tell this is the, the pressure out port right here and there's nowhere for an o-ring to sit so um, back in the day they would put like silicone um, gasket maker around here just so it makes a tight seal that way that the oil doesn't just pressure back into the tank so this is garbage I'm gonna reuse the o-ring right here because it's still pretty good and then I got an o-ring set somewhere around here that I'm gonna put to uh, use that hole right here for the gear for the new block so let me swap everything over and get, I'll get the new assembly onto the new block all right so I got the new dump assembly on the new block right here I got the o-ring the, the tank o-ring on I got it nice and tight so what I'm gonna do now is put the gear um, this new block has I think six holes for for the gear to mount and I know for sure I have some bolts over there so I'm going to take off these bolts that I bought not that long ago for it take those off and then get some, the ones I have over here on the shelf are about this long mount straight to the block and there we go got the motor sitting over here with the key that's the key and make sure you guys want to put in the key in you put it in a proper way because the key has two different splines. One for the motor to pop in it and one for the gear to get in it. There's different splines. So keep that in mind. Alright, let me uh, finish putting it completely together and we'll be right back. Oh, one thing though. 
when working with your uh, return lines, uh, when you're hooking them up, hook them up first, finger tight on both ends until they're as tight as you can get it by 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 your hands with your hands, and then use an adjustable wrench or whatever wrench uh, to tighten them with. So first, snug them with your hands and then tighten them up. But if you try to tighten them up and then you're trying to route the other, connect the other end, and then tightening, it's gonna bound. It's gonna you're gonna create a kink in the return line right here. So keep that in mind when you're putting your return lines on. All right, be right back. All right, I got the new. I'm um, not the new, but I got the gear on. I got the O-ring on the block from the gear to the block. So now we got a good uh, seal. We shouldn't have any more problems because those old school blocks are not worth. Not are not really that okay using these unless you have a machine to uh, grind in the spot for an O-ring to sit. But that's up to you. So. Now I'm just going to put the tank and the motor back on. This is golden to put back in the MC so I can finish tucking the wires. And then I'm done with the MC completely. Since I already tested everything, I know everything works. Good connection and all that. So, so yeah. Um, let's see, where was he? So, some people ask why don't you I just use thread putty or some kind of thread lock instead of using teflon tape uh because if you use thread lock the only thread lock that you can actually use on on the hydros is the red type the red seal thread lock type um lock type makes it it's as expensive as hell but the thing is when you want to take your setup apart, you gotta you gotta heat it up, and then doing that, you risk the chance of discoloring your fittings, you know, and ruining pretty much ruining your clean chrome fittings, um, stuff like that because they need a lot of heat for that red Loctite to come loose, to become a bit of a liquid to uh, undo your fittings. So I recommend just staying old school way using Teflon. Yeah, sometimes it gets yellow, sometimes it doesn't. If you use, if you use enough Teflon tape, then the Teflon that shows doesn't turn yellow. All right. So, but since I've been working on stuff like that, it'll kind of turn a little yellow. But uh, it's all up to you guys. If you guys want to look clean. But it's a pain to, to take it apart and use the Loctite. But if you want it to come clean off every time, I recommend Teflon tape. So it's cheap and you can get your fittings and hoses off without any hassles. So uh, let me put this pump back together, throw it back into the MC, and uh, hook everything back up. All right, guys, I got the front pump in. I tested it, it works just fine and better than it did with the older block. It's been, um, the trunk has a bad weather stripping, so it gets water in here. Uh, I didn't know that until it started raining and then the, uh, the owner of the MC told me that it leaks in here. So, um, as you guys can tell, I got the wires tucked from the dump assembly, tucked them to the fittings right here, down underneath behind the block and in between solenoids and underneath the crossbar right here, the mounting bar for the pumps. So I got all the pumps zip tied up, doesn't look bad at all. And then the hoses were all over the place so I put one zip tie there to keep the hose down. The rear hoses, I zip tied them to the posts of the hold downs, so it's zip tied in that area. Same over here, zip tied in the area, so it kind of looks like they kind of sway out and into the cylinders. So, what do you guys think? You know, unfortunately, the the nice engraving that the homie did that the um, 
kind of blocked, but hey, at least you know it's there. Well, oh well. Well, that's it. All I gotta do is some little paint touch ups in the trunk. But that's it. It's in work, it's working condition. It would perform better if it had six batteries. So, all the homeboy will have to do is run this cable right here underneath the bar in between the two posts that are welded to the frame into that battery terminal because it, it will be hooked up from there to there and then that one to the solenoid right there so that's it everybody hopefully you guys like the series of the MC I know I think I already said that in the last video thinking that it was going to be the last one um, what I'm going to do now is just clean up and touch up so, because it's getting picked up tomorrow. So, yeah, hopefully you guys like the videos. Hopefully you guys like the setup of how it is now. So, got a Talons running to the front. Deltas for the rear. The Talons just react better. So, my opinion. But that's it. That's it for the MC. Alright. If you guys like the videos, don't forget to give a like. And if you're new, don't forget to fuck, fuck. Don't forget to subscribe. All right, that helps me out. Helps me out a lot. So, and uh, I'll post up that flyer again for the homie that's making the car show for the little girl that's battling cancer. So, hopefully to see you guys out there. If you guys are from Oregon. Or from Southwest Washington or North Washington. Hopefully you guys can make it out there. It'll be, I think it's in Woodburn. So, But here's the flyer anyways. Um, don't forget to buy some stickers. Um, I'll put my email down below. And here, just email me. Buy, buy some stickers. You know. There you go. Help me out. Help me grow the channel. And don't forget to share the videos if you think they're helpful. Share them on your Facebook, Instagram, wherever you guys like to be at. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I got any more, nothing, anything to say. Maybe one more thing, real quick. Uh, somebody asked, so, a few people actually have asked me about oil. Well, to me, to tell you the truth, I don't give a crap about what oil, what special oil to put in the side rows. I use Penn's oil, 520 or 530, I don't remember. But I use that in all my pumps and all the rides that I've been working on. That's what I put in them. Um, people say, why don't you put non-detergent in this and this and that? Well, that would make sense if it was a hopper when you're doing a hopper you got to get the most out of it that's just me so running street cars cruisers whatever just motor oil that's fine you know you can like like i said everybody has their own opinion motor oil has tra treated me perfectly so i have nothing against it it all depends on a person that wants to put in the setup so yeah and when you guys are done putting your stuff together done testing make sure you put teflon on the plugs if you don't oil will seep out through here and it'll look nasty at the car shows so but that's it enough of me complaining but yeah all right email me any questions that you guys want that you guys don't want to ask me in the comments or ask me in the comments down below is up to you. Um, yeah. All right, everybody. Peace. Almost forgot. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram right here. And the tools that I use in this video, you'll find them in the description below. I do have a P.O. box. If you guys want to send me anything, stairs, whatever, don't send me stuff to work on. But send it to this P.O. box right here. 
and then I'll put it in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.